There is a history, right, of dismantling neighborhoods and communities. There's no hub of like, this is where black people are. Like every other culture has that in Vancouver. Like you go to Richmond, you go to Surrey, you kind of know what you're gonna expect. For sure. Black people is like, we're kind of sprinkle here, sprinkle there. And to know that the city was a part of something like that, obviously it's, it's disheartening. Well, that was a clip from the award-winning documentary Union Street. The film celebrates the black community in Vancouver and chronicles the ongoing effects of racism, displacement, and the cultural erasure of African Canadians. To tell us more, we have with us in studio the director, writer, and executive producer of the film, Jamila Pomeroy. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Oh, so good to have you here. And such an important conversation to have, especially at this time. But let's talk about, let's, your, your film specifically highlights Vancouver's Hogan's Alley. This was formerly a black neighborhood. And then tell us what happened. This was back in the 70s. What happened to that neighborhood? So yeah, there was a, a very, very vibrant black community way, like starting way back to when the original train porters came to Vancouver. Um, and this vibrant community had, you know, restaurants, speakeasies, jazz clubs. So it was so popular that we had people coming up from the States like Ella Fitzgerald, oh, no Jimmy, Jimmy Hendrix family was in the in the neighborhood. So lots of lots of big jazz stars of that of that era. Um, and unfortunately, the city of Vancouver labeled the black community as a blight that needed to be cut out of the city. Mm. Um, so what we saw over over you know many years was things like um, garbage disposal not being picked up from the community. You know, people being denied mortgages, people being denied business loans or, you know, business licenses, liquor licenses. Um, and this was something that happened for many years until, unfortunately, um, the city decided that they wanted to build a massive American-style freeway. Um, and they thought that the black community was a great place to build a viaduct that would lead into that freeway. Mm -hmm. Of course, the freeway didn't actually end up getting built. And what happened was um, the viaduct was built and it still stands there to this day in the heart of what was a vibrant black community. Mm -hmm. So the homes were destroyed yes. in Hogan's Alley. Where did the people who lived in said homes go? So a lot of people were displaced. The majority of, of the community were displaced. Um, there was a social project that was built um, with the idea and intention of the community moving into this social housing. Um, a lot of folks didn't want to because, you know, if you have a vibrant community, your yeah. your home is is in a certain place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't you don't want to be moved. So uh, what we saw was a lot of people moved throughout the GBRD. Um, a lot of folks moved to Seattle, mm -hmm. which is part of why Seattle has such a big wow. black population. And then we saw folks just spread out through the country. So just a lot of a lot of displacement for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. What does the city of Vancouver have to say about the max, uh, mass exodus that happened after the Hogan Alley area was sort of effectively dismantled? Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's been an ongoing conversation and an ongoing struggle. There's been lots of, of activists and community members trying to get the city to acknowledge this. Um, since the making of the film, we've actually seen a black land um, trust put in place, um, largely due to um, an incredible organization called Hogan's Alley Society, who've been pushing back for many years, and many activists have been pushing back on this. Um, so we are seeing a, a black land trust put in place, but not a whole lot has, has happened. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, why this is so important to be talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jamila, you moved to Vancouver in your early teens and you grew up around the suburbs and in the city. So talk about how your experience of growing up uh, black in Vancouver propel you to make this film. Yeah, well, yeah, being being biracial and having a Kenyan Canadian family in the suburbs was definitely, um, you know, they're, they're was hardly any other black folks in in the suburb I grew up in, um, and I, I, <laughs> I you know, I, I, I look to my own experience of, you know, just dealing with racism on a daily basis, um, you know, being made fun of for my hair to the point where I had to, I decided it was better for me to straighten my hair every day for, you know, <sighs> 15 years of my life, yep. I, I did that just to, fit you know, in. try and fit in and try and not um, deal with, with that on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And I looked to my dad's experience as, uh, you know, as an immigrant coming from Kenya. Um, oh, there's a, a yeah, that was us in, in Kenya. Um, but yeah, just, you know, having that experience and my dad's in the audience today. Yeah. Just, you must be so <laughs> 
yeah, it's you know, it's 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 difficult, and it's this is the same experience that many people in the city, both in Vancouver and in the suburbs, have to deal with mm -hmm. um, still to this day. Mm -hmm. Talking about today, what does Hogan's Alley look like yeah. today? Mm -hmm. So right now, the the you know Hogan's Alley and Black Strathcona is not a, a black dominant community, but what we are seeing is people come back into the community. Um, you know, a lot of the folks in the film, um, I think of people like um, Asha Wielden, who has a, a beautiful um, spot in, in uh, Strathcona. Um, we also have, you know, folks like Roger uh, Collins, who has um, an incredible spot um, right in the heart of this historic community. So we are seeing people come back to the neighborhood. We're seeing, um, you know, folks take up space, but there's still a, a lot of work to be done as a lot of the folks are facing the same issues they were facing back in the 70s still, with, the, still, with the city. Nearly 50 years later. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the film, of course, examines the past, but it also spends a lot of time in the present. Why was that important to you? Well, I think it helps us contextualize that these issues are ongoing and really organizing the film um, with just themes versus past and present. Mm -hmm. where it allows us to understand, okay, so people, you know, train porters who were first coming to the city were dealing with this racism and, and oppression. And then we have people here dealing with a lot of the same things mm -hmm. with their businesses. And, and, and so it, I think it helps people understand that more work needs to be done mm -hmm. and that this is an ongoing issue. Mm -hmm. and, and to that point, you say it's not about building statues, but about asking how we encourage the black community to take up space. What does that mean? Absolutely, yeah. I think, you know, we look at things like statues, banners, hashtags. These are all important things Really, what we need to focus on is tangible, actionable change. Um, you know, supporting, uh, supporting the community, supporting these black business owners and community members um, in a tangible way that helps us build a brighter and more, more community-driven future. Mm. Mm. Jamila, thank you wow. so much for everything you've yeah. done for this documentary. Thank you so, so much. much. It's so beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Success. Thank you so much for being here. Street is streaming now. Be sure to check it out. Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.